Hi everyone, Christina here. Before we get started on today's card, we have a new card class at onlinecardclasses.com. Stay tuned for more info and a chance to win your very own spot for free in our latest class. For today's card, I'm going to be using this adorable stamp set from Art Impressions called Doggy Kisses. And I really love this set because I don't know about you, but I have a lot of people in my life who are getting injured or are sick or just need some extra encouragement. So this is a perfect stamp set for that. So I'm going to start out by prepping my card base. This is going to be a one layer card and I'm going to do some colored pencils on it. And I thought it would be kind of fun to use a more neutral background instead of the usual white. So I'm using some Nina Desert Storm 100 pound cardstock and I've scored that at five and a half to create a top folding card. Now I'm placing the card inside my Misty stamping tool and I'm going to do a, bit, a bunch of stamping. I'm going to make this box of tissues and a little cup of tea. I'm going to make that look like it's in front of the dog that I'll later be stamping. So I'm first going to stamp it in some black Simon Says Stamp ink and I'm going to go ahead and press that down. I'm using my Misty because I wanted to stamp the image twice to make sure that it's nice and dark. So I'm going to go ahead and ink up that stamp one more time. And then I'll swing that over and the lines just intensify and they're nice and bold. So I previously stamped this and had to start over because I made a mistake. So I already have a mask made. I just used a post-it note, stamped those, uh, the image of that, and then trimmed out the side. And that's going to protect that little uh, Kleenex box or tissue box and cup of tea while I stamp this cute little dog. He's cuddling his teddy bear. I think it's so cute. So I'm going to stamp him twice just like I did with the other stamp to make sure the lines are nice and dark. And then I'm going to take the greeting that comes in the stamp set or one of the greetings. There's lots of them actually. And this one is really, really cute. I thought it went well with the imagery that I'm using. And it says, heard it's been rough. I think that's a great sentiment um, to send to anyone who's been sick or is ill. And it's just really fun. So the packaging for the stamp set has the colored images on it. And like I've said in the past, I like to use that as a reference just so it's easy to know where to put shadows. So these colored pencils from Prismacolor, um, I showed these in a previous video and a bunch of you asked how I got them so sharp. So I'm showing you this pencil sharpener. This is my favorite pencil sharpener. It's fantastic. It has um, the front part that comes out and then you pinch the two levers to put the pencil in and then let go of those levers and it holds the pencil tight so it doesn't move around. And then you can turn the crank on the other end and it sharpens the pencil. Now because this does sharpen it to quite a point you do sacrifice some of the pencil but I find it that, that that's completely worth it because I get a really really sharp point and um, you know I don't uh, like it doesn't waste a ton of the pencil if that makes sense. Like it I feel like I'm getting more use out of it because it makes it easier to use. So the one thing you do have to notice or be aware of when you have a pencil that's this sharp is that usually the very tip, the very sharp tip does break off because it is so delicate and you're, you know, you're coloring and pressing onto the paper. So usually the very tip breaks off, but that's not a problem because it's still very sharp otherwise. So the way I'm coloring this image, especially, you know, or in particular on this darker background, instead of something with white, is I'm adding some white highlights first. And that gives me a good area that I'm going to keep nice and bright. And I think it also adds some brightness to the paper. So it just, it gives some highlighted areas where otherwise it could look rather dull because it makes everything that brown shade. So I'm adding in all those areas where there's going to be highlights on the dog and the bear and um, even the box of tissues and then the teacup. And then I'm coming in with the colors that are going to be the shadows. So the darkest colors that I'm going to be using and I'm going to color those in first. And then I'll take a lighter shade and I'm going to go over the white areas. And that just turns that white to a different shade, it tints it, and it gives it a really great dimension. 
So I know a lot of people, they when they color with colored pencils, they use Gamsol or, or Mineral Spirits or some other type of medium to get nice, smooth pencil lines or no pencil lines, if, if you'd rather have that. Um, I haven't tried that, or I did a while back, but I didn't like the fumes and things like that. So I don't mind having it look a little bit more textured with some colored pencil lines and these Prismacolor pencils actually do fairly well with you know blending out the all the different pencil strokes I think that's not quite as obvious and as long as you have some good contrast in there with some darker shades and some highlights you're, it's going to look great no matter what you do so I've almost got this completely colored. I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the color of the dog. I did add a few different colors of brown just to get it to the right tone because I wanted it to be a different brown than what's on the bear. And then I decided to color that box of tissues a nice blue shade. Um, I always think of blue boxes of tissues. I'm not sure why. And then I'm going to take a nice bright green and I'm going to add that to the teacup. And this bright, bright green is going to be the highlight. And then I'm going to bring in a little more of a darker green. It's a little more muted. And I'm going to add the shading to the rest of that cup. And it's going to give it a nice, bright area to focus on. So there's just a couple more things to finish up on this image. I'm going to add some black, very, very faint black to create a shadow. And then I'm going to bring in a black pen and darken up some of those lines. As you can see, the waxy texture of the colored pencils sometimes dulls out the black of the lines on the stamped image. So I like to just come in with a pen and just fix that up. And I'm using a pilot envelope addressing pen for that. It's really great. So after I had all of that image colored in, I decided to add some stenciling above the image on the front of the card. So I'm going to put down my craft sheet to protect my work area. And then I'm taking some two inch wide post-it tape and I'm masking off the area just above the fold. This is going to protect the back of the card. I'm using the stars stencil from Tim Holtz and I'm masking off that one side since the card's a little bit too wide for the stencil. And then I'm coming in with some Simon Says Stamp white pigment ink and a mini round blending tool. And I'm just blending on some of that color. I want the white shade to be most concentrated at the very top of the card. So I'm putting down a lot of ink at the very top and then I'm blending it out toward the bottom. And by only taping down that one side, which also served as a mask, I'm able to lift up that stencil and see where how it's going, if I need to come down a little further or not, and then I can place it back down. So I did want to bring it down a little bit, a little bit more. And then I was able to add really, really bright white up at the top. So I wanted to make sure that that white was very stark up at the very top of the card. And then blended that out so it was a little bit more of a smooth transition. So I'm going to peel up this stencil and slide it to the right and line it back up with those stars. And I will just go ahead and stick this down onto my craft sheet now. And then I'm going to come right back in and finish off the area with the stars. So like I did before, I'm having most of that color concentrated at the very top of the card and then blending that down so that it kind of fades off toward the area with the dog. So I thought that was just super fun. I love those stars. And I'm going to peel off that post-it tape and then the card is basically complete. So that's the card for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for joining me. And like I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, I have some more info for you about our newest class over at onlinecardclasses.com. I'm super excited about this class. It's called Rainbow Maker. And Jennifer McGuire and I have teamed up with Laura Basson, who is co-teaching this class with us. And we've also invited lots of fun crafty friends to share their rainbow techniques as well so it's a really really fun class we have lots of different cards to show you guys and it's going to be super fun so if you would like a chance to take this class for free i'm giving away three free spots on my blog and all you have to do is go to my blog and go to today's blog post and leave a comment i will pick the winners of the three free spots on Wednesday, June 28th, and I will announce it over at my blog. So you'll have to go back over there just to see if you've won or just check your email because I'll email the winners as well. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I will catch you guys very, very soon with another card 
and thanks for watching.